this video, we will explain how and why atoms form covalent bonds. Then, in lecture we saw that molecules are groups of atoms that are connected by covalent bonds. So what is a covalent bond exactly? A covalent bond involves the sharing of electrons between atoms. Why would atoms want to share electrons, though? Well, atoms make bonds because in doing so, they go to a lower energy state. They do that because the positive charges of the nuclei of each atom are repelled by one another, but if we stick electrons between the nuclei, we can lower that repulsive energy. Most atoms become more stable when their outermost shell can be filled with electrons. So what happens is atoms either try to gain or lose and share electrons via bonding in order to achieve this full arrangement of electrons in their outermost shell. Oh, okay, I see. Can you maybe give a concrete example of that? Sure. Hydrogen atoms are found in the first row or period of the periodic table. This tells us that each hydrogen atom has only one shell that can be used for electrons. Because the hydrogen is also found in the first column or group, this tells us that this hydrogen atom has one valence electron in its outermost shell. This only shell can fit two electrons in that shell. This means that the hydrogen atom, which has one electron, still has enough space to jam another electron in. It solves this problem of filling this outermost shell by making a bond, in this case to another hydrogen atom, in which each of the atoms share their one valence electron so that now both hydrogen atoms have filled each of their own outermost shells. Okay, but in your example, the atoms involved were the same, right? There were two hydrogen atoms. Is it also the same for bonds formed between different atoms then? How different atoms share electrons depends on the atoms. In the previous example, the sharing of electrons was equal. It doesn't have to be that electrons are always shared equally. Oh, okay. How would I know, though, if atoms share equally or not? That's a good question, Seen. The key is to look at the electronegativity of each atom that's involved in the covalent bond. More specifically, what we do is we look at the difference in electronegativity between the atoms. Remember, electronegativity is just the tendency of an atom to want the electrons to be close to its nuclei. An atom with high electronegativity will have a tendency to pull harder on the electron pair that is involved in the covalent bond. So if you look at each bond and compare the difference in electronegativity between each atom involved in the bond, you can determine what kind of covalent bond it is. Oh, okay. So you would say that there's different types of covalent bonds? Yeah. Covalent bonds are divided into two broad classes. Some covalent bonds are polar and other covalent bonds are nonpolar. This just depends on the difference in electronegativity between the atoms involved. Any time the difference in electronegativity between two atoms is less than 0.4, then we say the electrons in that covalent bond are likely to be shared roughly equally between the two atoms. On the other hand, if the difference in electronegativity is larger than 0.4, then the electrons are going to be shared unequally in the covalent bond. In this case, this covalent bond is then polar. Oh. 
Okay. So the example of the hydrogen atoms was a non-polar covalent bond. Can you also give me an example of a polar covalent bond? Sure. Let's look at a water molecule. Water is a molecule that's made up of one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms. Oxygen is an atom that's found in the second period and sixth group of the periodic table. Mm -hmm. This means an oxygen atom has two shells that are available to be filled with electrons. And in the second, outermost shell, it has six of its own valence electrons. The second shell has space for eight valence electrons. Okay, so same as before, we can start sharing electrons and making bonds to these atoms to fill this second shell of electrons around oxygen. The oxygen atom binds two hydrogen atoms, and by forming two separate covalent bonds, the oxygen atom ultimately achieves eight valence electrons in its outermost shell. It's a win-win situation both for the hydrogen atom and the oxygen atom. The difference here is that the sharing of electrons in these bonds between hydrogen and oxygen is not equal. That's because the difference in electronegativity between the two atoms is larger. Oxygen has an electronegativity value of 3.5 if we look it up in a table, whereas hydrogen has an electronegativity value of 2.1. This means that there's a relatively large difference. And in this case, because the oxygen's more electronegative, it pulls harder on the electron pair that's shared in each covalent bond with the hydrogen atom. Because the electron pair is being pulled harder on by the oxygen atom, those two electrons in the bond between hydrogen and oxygen spend more of their time close to the positive nucleus of the oxygen atom than they do near the nucleus of each hydrogen atom. What this means is that the oxygen atom acquires a sort of partial negative charge on it, whereas each hydrogen acquires a slightly positive charge on its uh, nucleus. This creates a little dipole, a mini magnet, and we call this kind of a bond a polar bond. Oh, okay. Wow, Dan. Thank you. Now I really understand what you mean with covalent bonds. Okay.